time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Hello, everybody. Yes, it's the new Gay Family series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. Brought to you by the Jell-O family of desserts. J-E-L-L-O Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O pudding. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tap. The Oka pudding cancery. And now Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. <laughs> we look in on the Coopers, it's morning. George Cooper is in the dining room eating breakfast. And Liz is hiding in the kitchen with Katie the maid. Why are you afraid to see Mr. Cooper this morning? Is it something about money? Shh, that's a dirty word. <laughs> oh, oh, dear, what is it this time? Well, to put it in a nutshell, George wants to go over our Christmas list this morning, and I'm supposed to buy the presents with the money I'm supposed to have been depositing in our Christmas club account at the bank each month. Well, don't you have enough? Well, not quite. You see, Katie, uh, I missed a few months. Uh, how many? Twelve. <laughs> I just got a letter from the bank yesterday. Was it a statement? No, it was more of a question. It said, what happened? <laughs> oh, Mr. Cooper, why don't you just go in and tell him the truth? Tell him the truth? Katie, your brakes are slipping. <laughs> you know how George is about money. You'd think it was made out of gold or something. <laughs> well, I'll just stay right here with you until he leaves for work. Liz, Liz, will you come in? Oh, trapped. Well, I'll just have to rely on the old standby. I'll lay down a smooch screen. You know, that always sort of takes his mind off things. Coming, baby! Good luck! Hey, what were you doing out there, Liz? Well, I was just making sure that my little husband gets enough to eat for his breakfast. Oh. oh, I had plenty, thanks. Oh, that's good. Uh, look, Liz, I had a couple of minutes, and I thought it oh, might be a... Oh, you great, big, adorable thing. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. oh, where'd you ever... Where'd you ever get such beautiful, blonde, wavy hair, George? Hmm? I got on a deal. It came with my head. Ooh, you're so witty. Give me a great big kiss, honey. Hmm... <laughs> Where'd you learn to kiss like that? It's a gift hmm. Oh, that reminds me We just have time to go over the Christmas list Oh, I had to open my big fat kisser Now, uh, here's the list Yeah, it's a long one, isn't it? Well, we don't have to worry about that As long as we have that old Christmas club money salted away Yeah yeah, no charge accounts for us. No worrying about how to pay next January. Uh, <laughs> we can show them the color of our money, that beautiful green. <laughs> something tells me there's going to be a white Christmas. <laughs> George, you know something? I don't think we have enough money in the Christmas account. What? Well, Liz, you, you haven't been skimping, have you? Oh, no, no, no. Every month I put in the same amount. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> Uh, what I meant was, uh, I like our friends twice as much as I thought I did. They're, they're so wonderful. Why don't you give me some more money, and then I'll have enough, I mean, twice as much for everybody. You know, that's a funny thing. I've been thinking about our friends, too. You have? Yeah. And I think half as much of them as I thought I did. <laughs> oh. I think we should take half the money in our Christmas fund and pay bills with it. Oh, no. Well, what's the matter with that? Well, George, let's be practical about this now. I scrimp and save all year long to get that money together, and now you want to throw it away on bills. <laughs> well, after all, Liz, What we about have... the Christmas spirit? Well, it's Stockings true. Stockings on the fireplace. Well, it's just that this was... Would... the night before Christmas and all through the house. Liz, I was Up, only... Up, down, or down, Blitzen, here, Dancer, here, Prancer, here, Vixen, here, Schmixen, here, dee 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 Liz! Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way! Yes, oh. yes, 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 all right! Yes, 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 yes. All right. <laughs> we won't use any of the money for the bill. Goody. But I won't give you any extra either. Just use what you have in the Christmas Club account. Goody dipped in pickle juice. <laughs> Katie, yes, 
Mrs. Cooper. I just figured out how to send presents to everyone, and it won't cost us a cent. We'll make fruit cakes. Oh. Uh, but, Mrs. Cooper, that's a lot of work. Well, I'll help you, like we did when we baked the cakes for the church bazaar. We'll do it together. Yes, ma'am. I'll bake the cakes, and you'll lick the bowl. <laughs> oh, I love you, Katie. Well, that takes care of everyone on my list but two. George and, uh, one other. <laughs> uh... Katie, do you no, mind? No, I don't mind. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Gosh, just what I've always wanted, a fruitcake all my own. <laughs> yeah, don't rub it in. <laughs> oh, I won't. What are you going to do about Mr. Cooper? Oh, I don't know. I could always suggest that we don't exchange presents, but it would be just like him to be a stinker and not give me anything. <laughs> I'll have to get some money some way. I wonder if I could get a part-time job. A job? You? Well, you don't have to use that tone. I'll show you I can get a job. Where's the paper? Oh, Mr. Cooper took it with him. Uh, Why don't you go next door to Mr. Woods? Four of his 11 children have paper routes. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll be right back, Katie. If you want me, I'll be in the classified (laughs) ad. Good morning, Mrs. Cooper. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks, Mr. Wood. I wonder if you... Mrs. Could... Cooper, jump out of the way. What's the matter? The children are ready to leave for school. Stand back. Well, I don't see what all... Oh! Goodbye, Bob. Madeline. Adele. Lucille. Ruth. Lucien. Jesse. Walter. Jeff. Joanne. My goodness. Do you mind if I don't speak for a minute, Mrs. Cooper? (laughs) My lips get so tired. (laughs) Eleven of them just went by. (laughs) I only counted ten. Oh, no, I'm sure that all eleven... Goodbye, Hugo! Oh, you were right. (laughs) Do you go through that every morning? And every night, too. Although the morning is the most hazardous. What's hazardous about it? Well, I haven't found out who it is. But someone's got a sharp propeller on his atomic beanie. <laughs> well, I-, I guess having 11 children does have hazards. Well, I can't blame anyone but myself. <laughs> True. To think the two words caused this whole thing. Two words? What were they? I do. <laughs> well, you certainly did. <laughs> True. Well, Mrs. Cooper, what did you come over for? Oh, uh, I wanted to see a morning paper. I'm looking for a job. Mr. Cooper lost his? No, no. I'm trying to earn some money for Christmas. I spent the money I was supposed to buy presents with. Oh, no, wait a minute. My oldest girl, Adele, has just taken a new position. Perhaps you could get her old job. What is it? Uh, Babysitting. (laughs) Do you think you could do that? Well, I don't know about the baby part, but I certainly know how to sit. Good. I'll call the Pearsons this afternoon and see if they'll give you the job. Well, I'm all ready to go to work, Katie. How do I look? Oh, you look fine, Mrs. Cooper, but I don't know what you got so dressed up for. Well, I want to make a good impression. I, I never babysitted before. Uh, babysatted. I never... I mean, I never sat on a baby. I'm so nervous. Well, how old is the baby? Uh, Adele Wood wrote the details down. See, he's five years old. His name is Tommy Pearson. And don't bend over when he has a bean shooter in his hand. (laughs) Where does Mr. Cooper think you're going? Well, I told him I was going to a lecture at the women's club with Iris Atterbury. (laughs) Just to make it look good, I even asked George to come along. Naturally, he said no. (laughs) Oh, you're a tricky one, Mrs. Cooper. (laughs) I know my way around. Well, so long, Katie. I'll go in and say goodbye to George. Well, goodbye, honey. I'm leaving for the lecture now. Goodbye, baby. Have a nice time. I hate to go alone. Are you sure you won't reconsider and come with me? No. Oh, come on. Well, okay, I'll go with you. Huh? I'll go with you as far as the door. I left my pipe in my overcoat. Oh, George, you're so clever. (laughs) Well, it wasn't that far. Oh, yes, it was. You have no idea. Well, goodbye, dear. Iris will be waiting for me. (laughs) 
Mr. Cooper, is there anything I can get you? You've been pacing around the house like a caged lion. No, it's funny. I, I don't know what to do with myself when Liz isn't here. Uh, she ought to be home soon. Home? She's only been gone 20 minutes. Oh, oh, really? Say, if Liz is out with Iris, Mr. Atterbury must be alone. I'll call him and see if he wants to go to a show. That's a good... Oh, no, no, that's a terrible idea. Don't do it. Well, why not? Well, I, I just see if it wouldn't be good. Oh, nonsense. I can tell about these things. I'm psychopathic. <laughs> Hello? Goodbye. Uh, may I speak to Mr. Atterbury, please? Well, just a minute. Uh, is this George? Yes. Who's this? Iris. Iris? Well, why didn't you go to the lecture? What lecture? The lecture at your club. Well, there's no lecture at the club. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the lecture that was left an hour ago to go to with you. Well, I don't know what that... Oh, that lecture! <laughs> I forgot all about it. I better rush. She's probably waiting for me at the club. I'll put my shoes on. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Nice try, Iris, but the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, and she left me holding it. <laughs> well, the cat forgot to tell me I was her alibi. Where do you suppose she is, George? I don't know, but when she gets home, there's going to be a question and answer session, and she better know the answers. <laughs> Trouble ahead. But maybe Liz can get George in a good mood with an extra special jello treat like a luscious banana mold. It's quick as a wink to fix in any of those six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. Well, suppose you choose shimmering red strawberry jello this time. Just prepare it as usual, and when slightly thickened, fold in two medium bananas sliced. Chill until firm, and garnish with extra banana slices and whipped cream. It's pretty as a picture and tastes so rich and fruit-like. Because all six Jell-O flavors have that wonderful locked-in goodness. Fresh-tasting flavor that makes you think of the berry patch and the orchard. And that's why Jell-O is America's favorite gelatin dessert. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell... J-E-L-L-O. Now, back to the Coopers. Liz Cooper has taken up babysitting to earn money for George's Christmas present. Well, right now, she's just getting home from her first night on the job. Thank you for driving me home, Mr. Pearson. Oh, you're very welcome, Mrs. Cooper. After all, it's after one o'clock. I'm sorry Tommy gave you so much trouble. Well, it was my own fault. I shouldn't have bent over. <laughs> I didn't dream a bean shooter could shoot that far. Well, good night. Uh, good night. Gosh, I didn't know I'd be out this late. I better tiptoe in so I won't wake George. Now, if I can just get up... Liz! Oh! <laughs> you! What are you doing up? I'm waiting for you. Oh, you were worried. Yes. Tell me about the lecture, dear. What was it about? Oh, the usual thing. Let's go to bed, George. <laughs> what was it about, Liz? Don't separate your words at me, George Cooper. <laughs> Liz, the lecture must have had a subject. What was it? Uh, finance. Good. As a banker, I'm interested. Uh, as a subject picker, I'm stupid. <laughs> What did he say about finance, Liz? Uh, you wouldn't be interested, George. It's elementary. Hmm. You mean things like inflation, the fiscal year, and the devaluation of the British pound? Oh, oh, George, you're so smart. Those are exactly the things he talked about. He told us all about that fiscal business. Uh, what did he uh, say about it? About what? That fiscal business. Oh, uh, he said uh, not to put your money in fiscals this year. <laughs> Uh, 
That's right, isn't it? Oh, yes. Did he say why? Yes. Because the frost ruined them all. <laughs> he certainly knew what he was talking about. Oh, thank you. What did he say about the British pound? Uh, it's being invalidated. <laughs> Devaluated. Oh, yes, that's it. And it won't be long before the pound only weighs eight ounces. <laughs> George, it makes it lighter for the English people to carry their money around. I see. How did Iris like the lecture? Iris? Oh, she fell asleep. No, Liz. No? No. <laughs> Iris was home all evening. I happen to know there was no club meeting and there wasn't any lecture. Boy, have we been wasting each other's time. <laughs> Elizabeth, where were you tonight? Well, I... I... I'm sorry, George, I can't tell you. Oh, fine. My wife stays out till 1.30 and then can't tell me where she was. Oh, George, if I told you, it would spoil everything. I'll bet it would. <laughs> now, George, you're not going to be stuffy about this, are you? No, I can take it. Who is he, Liz? <laughs> Who's who? This... This other man, my rival. Rival? Oh, oh, George! <laughs> Never mind the act. Who, who is he? Oh, this is wonderful. Georgie, you're jealous. Georgie, you're jealous. I am not. You are, too. If your eyes were any greener, you could stuff them with pimentos. <laughs> Liz, for the last time, who is he? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, did you sleep on the couch in the den last night? No, Katie, that was my righteous, indignant husband, George. Oh, didn't you tell him you were babysitting? No, it's so funny, Katie. He thinks I have a secret lover. You, a secret lover? <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> Sorry. I just think it's a cute, harmless situation, and I'm going to enjoy it for a while. I'll get it. Hello? Liz, girl. This is Iris. Oh, hi, stool pigeon. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, girl. You should have tipped me off. Oh, I guess I should have. Well? <laughs> well, what? <laughs> who is he? <laughs> who is who? The other man in your life, the one you were out with last night. I'm all ears. <laughs> you do pretty good in the nose department, too. <laughs> well, I was going to tell you, but now it's none of your business. Oh, come on, Liz, tell me. I can't talk now. George will be down any second. Well, I'll talk. You just answer yes or no. Is he six feet tall with curly black hair, big blue eyes, and flashing teeth? No. Too bad, girl. <laughs> Is he short, fat, and bald, but lousy with money? No. Now, Iris, will you please... I know. I know he's ugly and broke, and you're in love with his mind. Iris, for the last time, there isn't anybody. Well, this is a fine way to treat your best friend. Go ahead and be closed-mouthed. I'll find out anyway. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Well, Katie, the word is getting around. I haven't had this much attention since the fifth grade when a little boy and I were caught in the cloakroom. <laughs> really? Yeah, nobody would believe we were dusting our erasers. <laughs> Mr. Atterbury, I'd like to ask your advice. Ah, uh, come in, boy, come in. Iris told me all about your difficulties. Mm. It's been four nights. Every night Liz goes out. Another man is in love with my wife. It's a problem, boy. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? With Iris? Ha <laughs> ha! No such luck. <laughs> Oh, what can I do, Mr. Atterbury? There's only one answer, George boy. Fight fire with fire. Do the same thing yourself. Pretend you're in love with another man. I mean, woman. <laughs> hey, that, 
sets that might work. I've never seen it fail yet, and I've seen hundreds of movies. <laughs> now, if you're not good at pretending, really get yourself a date. It's a wonderful excuse. Okay, from now on, it's George Cooper, philanderer. <laughs> Where's George, Katie? I'm ready to leave again, and he's not blocking the door or shouting, Who is he? <laughs> well, he was around someplace. Here I am. Uh, what's the matter, Liz? Oh, nothing. I, uh, I'm leaving, George. So long. No. Oh, so long. Don't you care? Hmm? Care about what? I'm leaving. I'm going to meet your rival. Mm. Well, goodbye. <laughs> My lover. <laughs> But what are you waiting for, Liz? Don't you care? Well, yes, but I can't be sore at you when I'm doing the same thing. Well, of course not if you're... What do you mean you're doing the same thing? <laughs> well, I happened to run into an old girlfriend today, and I asked her if she... What? Oh, you're being so smart, pretending you have a date. Ha, <laughs> ha. You don't believe it, huh? No. Oh, you're such a rotten actor. <laughs> well, it so happens I was just going to call her and say I'm picking her up. <laughs> you got your finger on the hook. No, I have not see. Oh. Hello? Hello, Helen? What? <laughs> is this Helen? No, this isn't Helen. <laughs> this is Geraldine. <laughs> Helen has a deeper voice than mine. And this is George. <laughs> she doesn't even recognize your voice. Oh, George. What's going on? Where would you like to go tonight, dear? Oh, I get it. <laughs> Any place you'd like to go, darling. <laughs> oh, Helen. <laughs> You shouldn't say things like that. Oh, well, I'm just a devil. <laughs> well, all right. If uh, if you just want to take a ride in the country, <laughs> it is a full moon tonight. Just you and me. Yeah, what a disgusting thought. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. George, who is she? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? I'll tell you who mine is if you tell me who yours is. No, no, I didn't realize this was so much fun. I'll stay home if you'll stay home. What? Would you want me to stand Helen up? I'd like you to knock her down. <laughs> For the last time, George, are you going to tell me who she is? No. All right. Good night. I'm off to see my lover, and, and he's young, a lot younger than you are. Well, that's nice. And he's handsome and dashing. Mm, good. And he's loaded. <laughs> he's a big operator in beans. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Why don't you ever put the cap back on the toothpaste? Huh? Well, what's that got to do with anything? I've been saving it up until I was mad at you. Goodbye. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Cooper. I'll try to be home early. All right, Mr. Pearson. Well, what's the matter? You sound blue. Oh, I won't bother you with my personal problems. Well, I'll pay you for all five nights when I get back. Sorry I haven't had any small bills before now. That's all right. Goodbye, Mr. Pearson. Oh, there you are. I've caught you. George! Yes, George. I followed you here. Oh, darling, you do care. Yeah, so this is Mr. Big Bean Operator. Come on, put up your dupe. George! Oh, what's the matter, Mr. Cooper? No. <laughs> I guess that takes care of your lover. Oh, George, my lover is five years old. What? I've been babysitting to get money to buy you a Christmas present. Oh, gosh, this is awful. Well, it's worse than you think he hasn't paid me yet. <laughs> you just punched yourself right out of a Christmas present. <laughs> Yes, 
Lucille. Uh, what are we sticking around the city for, boy? Let's get out where the West begins and trap some cattle rustlers like the Western programs do. Let her go, partner. <laughs> Partner. Don't call me partner, stranger. Don't call me stranger, partner. <laughs> Although I've never had a stranger partner. Now look, smile when you say that. Oh, I've never had a stranger partner. <laughs> Rustlers called the Jello family. I'm a looking for strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, or lemon. Well, what about lime? Ah, uh, he couldn't have done it. He's too green. <laughs> How about lemon? Yeller, through and through. Hey, what was that for? I don't know. Thought it was time for some gunshots. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Start a beating your gums, son. Well, with Jell-O, the goodness is locked in and can't get out until your first delectable spoonful. Let's keep it western, Bob. <laughs> you mean the goodness is corralled in and can't break or tether till your first delectable spoonful is a bloomin' on the sage with roundup time in Texas, yippee-i-o, ki <laughs> Watch it, partner. If you out yippee me, you'll find yourself so full of holes I can use you for a stranger strainer. I mean, strainer strainer. <laughs> don't mean that... Yeah, you're headed for the big corral up yonder. Now, wait a minute. When I get there, will I be able to look for the big red letters on the box? Ah, reckon. Will there be jello to make me think of the real ripe fruit itself? Ah, reckon. (laughs) All right, then, gal, go ahead and shoot. What a wonderful way to go. Will there be all six delicious flavors oh, all? Oh, yeah, like that. I missed him. Good night, Bob. <laughs> Good night, Annie. Before long, all over America, folks will be sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner. And they'll feel happier if they've helped to bring individual aid to the people abroad who are still suffering from hunger and privation. CARE, a non-profit organization, makes it possible for you to send more per dollar than any other way. For instance, for $10, CARE will send a 22-and-a-half-pound food package overseas. You simply send your money to CARE, New York. Give your name and address and the name and address of the recipient. You'll receive a signed receipt upon delivery. Remember, through your help, those hungry men, women, and children can have their Thanksgiving, too. Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball and My Favorite Husband again next week, presented by Jell-O. Oh, it's a long cabin syrup for my mind, mind, mind. with that real not wood flavor, so fine, oh, so fine. Blended it cane and pure maple, it tops on your table, that real maple flavor, the pancakes a favor, it's long cabin syrup for my mind. mind, mind. Log Cabin is the syrup with that delicious Northwoods maple flavor. It's America's most popular quality table syrup. Enjoy it on waffles or pancakes for Sunday night suppers as well as at breakfast. It's Log Cabin syrup for my, 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 mine. Listen to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband again next week. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.